Hey everybody, welcome back. So we're still on the command line basics. This is the third and probably final part of this project. Uh, we just completed this Unix shell. So now with your newly discovered CLI power, superpowers, practice creating a folder and making a few files using make, dear, touch, and CD. So let's uh, change directories into the desktop. Um, and then I use the, uh, the user path and then forward slash with the desktop. So now we know we're on the desktop. Uh, let's see, we can make a directory called uh, practice, uh, CLI practice. And from the lesson before, we know we don't want to put, put a space there, right? So we're just making a, an underscore. We could do a dash here, actually. That's kind of more HTML style. And so now we can change directories into the CLI uh, practice. Boom. And then if we list it out there, we see we don't have anything. So we could touch index.html, right? And now, so if we list that out, now we've got index HTML there. And we could go, if we wanted to add some code to it, we could go echo, uh, maybe h1 tag, uh, hello world. And then close the h1 tag. And we could cat that into, is it greater than? Yeah, index.html. And so now if we were to cat index.html, it's got some hello world in there. And now what we could do is op open and then pass it a flag of A and do Google Chrome. And that should get us, oh, open dash A, Google Chrome, and then we wanna do index.html. Cool, and now we've got HTML on the screen. And so, yeah, that's a little bit quicker than maybe doing it that way, right? And so we're, we've got it formatted kind of correctly. Cool, I'm just going to close out of it, that for now. Um, let's see, okay, we did that. We did change directories in, uh, to the previous step. A basic website might have a main a, a, h, h, index.html and a CSS style sheet called style.css. So we could touch uh, style.css. And I think that we could cat um, maybe like... Uh, no, no, we'll just do that for now. Let's touch the style at CSS. Uh, now if we list that, we've got an HTML and a style sheet. And there might be a folder for images, it says. Okay, so we would do make dear images. And now if we list out that, we've got images, which is a folder, an index.html, and a style sheet. So this would be a basic for a very, uh, very basic uh, website. Um, we'll get more into that later. Think about how you could create these files with commands and put it into practice. So cool. Yeah, I think we've pretty much done that. Um, so let's practice creating files and directories and deleting them. All right, cool. So I think that was just a practice. So now we can change directories out of there and list them out. And now we can just go rm uh, CLI practice. Okay, it's a directory. And so was it rm-r? Yeah, and so now ls, we do CLI of practice is gone. We could uh, do CLI superpower as well because that was just me practicing earlier. Now we list it out. Now we're looking a lot better. So we've got the shell lesson data. That was from that, that previous exercise. We probably don't need that either. So we can go rm-r shell lesson data. Cool, and now if we list it out, it's just some regular... Oh, I don't think we need practice either. So we could do rm dash r practice. I actually don't think that it's a good idea to get in the habit of using the command line for this because you could always just highlight all that stuff and just delete it and then it would be in your, um, in your trash box because now, as you can see, none of that stuff is in the trash. So it's all completely gone. We can't recover it if we tried. But nonetheless, that's what we're practicing here. So let's practice creating files and directories and deleting them. Create a new directory in your home directory. Okay, wait, did we do that? Okay, so yeah. Um, here we're gonna say, create a new directory, make it your home directory with the name test. So mkdir test. And then we wanna navigate to it. So it's change directory test. Uh, create a new file called test. Touch test.txt. Uh, hint, use touch or echo command. Open your newly created file in VS Code and make some changes and save it and close it. Okay, so here where we go, open dash A, because that's for the application, and then visual 
studio code. You got to spell it correctly, I'm pretty sure. And then we just want to open the root. And since we're in the root directory, we can just go period. Nice. And I'm the author of this, so I can trust it. And OK, cool. So now we've got text.tst in here. Um, we can go Command J, and we've got our terminal here. And that way, we can actually move completely into Visual Studio Code. So we can close out of our terminal now when we'll start moving into our IDE, uh, IDE Integrated Develop Environment, which is this uh, Visual Studio Code. Um, so now navigate out of the test directory and then leave it. OK. Hmm. Uh, here are some changes. If we save that and then we cat the test.txt, you can see that there's some changes right there. And um, oh, you got to save everything before you do it. Run it like that. And now here are some changes. So cool. We made our changes. So now we should cat out. So if we go like that and then ls, we've got our test in there. So we can go rm-r test. And now if we list, we're gone. And this guy should start showing up as uh, not a real file. It should say that I need to save it. I guess it, if I'd thrown it in the trash, that probably would have said that it was uh, gone. OK, anyways, uh, we did, deleted the test it. Now we're out of it. That's it. We're done with the practice. If you commit to doing most of the things on the command line from here on out, these commands will become second nature to you, moving your copying files and much more efficiently done through the command line, even if it feels like more of a hassle at this point. There are times where it feels like a hassle, but then sometimes having these command lines uh, quick on hand are, are very helpful. OK, cool. So we're going to close that out for now. And we've cleaned up our desktop quite rapidly with that RM tool. OK, so use the command line like a pro. Here's some important things that you need to know about programmers. Programmers are lazy, Real, like le really lazy. When forced to do something over and over again, the odds are good that they'll figure out a way to automate it instead. The good news is that you get to take advantage of many shortcuts they've created along the way. And it's, it's time to learn how to use the command line like a pro, which is to say in a really lazy way. First, you might have already noticed that copying and pasting inside the command line doesn't work the way that you expect. When you're inside the command line, you'll need to use Shift or Command C to copy and Command V to paste. For example, to copy and paste your commands from your browser into your command line, you'll highlight the command text and use Control C as a usual as as usual, and then paste it in your terminal using Control Shift V. Test it out. Huh? That's interesting. I didn't know that that was actually a thing. I think it's because you use Command V. Yeah, it's the same thing with the terminal. So we'll open the terminal back up while there's we're still discussing these things, and then if I were to just paste copy this, that works too. So. Must be a Mac, uh, Windows thing. Uh, second, you need to learn about tab completion. Seriously, you will save you so much frustration. I believe it. Every, if everybody was paying attention, I'm always saying, if we're going to change directory, comma, forward slash, DES, tab, and you're into your desktop. There's no reason to be doing um, print, typing everything out. Uh, you need to move into a folder that's so far away, something like Odin Project Foundation JavaScript Calculator. That's a long command to type out, and everything needs to be exactly in the right order in order for it to work. Nope, you're way too lazy for that. Basically, by hitting tab, the command line will automatically complete the commands you've been typing once. Uh, there's only one option. For example, it's pretty common to have a documents folder and a downloads folder in the home directory. If you typed in CD, D, and then press tab, the command line will let you know that it's sure which one you want by showing you the different options that will m match what you've typed in so far. So yeah, bash, cd, d, documents, d, and then d. Be once you've typed a little bit more, it will complete the name for you, making it possible to write out the full file path by typing as little as cd, doc, yeah, cd, doc, then you just say documents, and then I don't think I, I don't really have anything else in there right now. But you're just basically tabbing it out, uh, depending on when your folder exists on your file. Test it out and get comfortable with the words. You're going to love it. Third, there's a really handy shortcut for opening everything within a project directory. The period. Oh, cool. We kind of already did that one. Once you've installed a text editor, you can use this shortcut to open up an entire project. And this shortcut is also commonly used with Git uh, later in, it's covered in detail, uh, with commands like git add dot. You can add all the files in the directory into Git staging. 
For example, if you have VS Code installed, you can CD into the project uh, directory and then type code dot with, with the period. It will launch VS Code, open up a project folder in your sidebar. Oh, cool. So right now we're on the desktop. If I go uh, code dot, didn't work. So maybe we need to get the uh, VS Code installed and the command line working. Code dash V. Interesting. Um, see the next section for lessons on more detail of this. A note on typing passwords. Okay, so yeah, when you're using a command line in the terminal, it requires you to enter a password for authentication whenever you do sudo things like sudo uh, cd. And then it asks you to type a password. If I type in my password and it passes, it, nothing happens, so it doesn't show it there. While you might think that the terminal isn't responding, don't worry. This is a security feature to protect confidential inf information like how password fields and websites and asterisks or dots. By not displaying the characters you write, the terminal keeps your password secure. Opening files in VS Code from the command line. So with Mac OS, uh, some setup is required. After installing VS Code, launch it any way you're comfortable with. Okay, we got it launched. Uh, once it's running, open the command palette with Command Shift P. And then the little dialog appears, put shell command. One of the choices is install code command in path. Install code command in path. Code will now prompt with OS script privileges to install the shell command. Okay. Shell command code successfully installed on path. Okay, cool. So now, let's see if I did code useful programmer. Nice. And so now it opens it up. Nice. And so now we've actually got all my folders in here. So we can close that for now. Cool. So now we've got the co uh, code working. Um, so if I change directories, I have a project called ImageHawk, which is just a Rails app. Um, I could go code, period, and that would open up this ImageHawk app. And this is how I could start running it. So again, I've got some setup stuff to do to be running Ruby again. So we're going to close out of there for now. Cool. Um, these additional resources are all very useful, but they're all, a lot of them are either uh, way too in-depth, and I would call them uh, useful tools to have on the side. Uh, you know, explain shell, that's something that would be worth remembering so that if you ever come across a really wa wacky, you know, bash command, you can run that one and it would give you an idea about how everything worked and what it was for. So that's a cool tool. Uh, the art of the command line, this is a really great sort of GitHub repository with all sorts of interesting stuff that you could work on in here. Um, Learn Enough Code to Be Dangerous. That's a big book that would take a while to get through. You've got some flashcards. And this cheat sheet, which I'll probably download and keep in my, um, my tools box. So yeah, let's wrap this one up with the uh, knowledge check. This section contains questions for you to check your understanding of this lesson on your own. If you're having trouble answering a question, click it and review the material in the links to it. Okay, cool. So what is the command line? The command line is basically the um, flashing text box that gives you tools to access the whole um, internet. Uh, it's the black screen. Ah, cool. That just goes up to the top. How do you open your, t your command line on your computer? Well, there's two ways you could do it here. You can do, get in, go into virtual, uh, Visual Studio Code and start it up there. Or you can just start the terminal application, which is um, you can go command and then uh, spacebar. And then you can just write terminal. And that will open up the existing terminal or a new one. Cool. Uh, how do you navigate up to a particular di directory? That's just the CD command, right? CD, colon slash stop. Um, what does the CD double with a double point do? It navigates you to the file that you were behind. So if you're on the desktop and you go CD dot dot, then you go back, then you are now um, one layer up. And so now if you go LS, your desktop, is a level above you. How do you display the name of the directory you are currently in? PWD. What do you display the contents of the directory? How do you display the contents of the directory you're currently in? LS. How do you create a new directory? So if we change directories into the desktop, in order to, uh, and we see that what's there, if we go make dir uh, new, new one, then if we list that, we see that we have the new one on here. And if we were to zoom out, we can see that the new one was created here. So make deer. 
how do you create a new file? If we change directories into the new one, what we can do is we can say uh, touch uh, index.html. And now if we list that out, we've got a new file there. And if we wanted to add something to that, we'd say echo hello world. And we can, was it cat? That to the index.html. No, that's not right. Uh, go cat. Oh, it needs to be this one. Nice. And now if we were to cat uh, index.html, we get the hello world. Cool. Um, create a new directory, create a new file. How do you destroy a file or a directory? LS well here, what we could do is rm the index. And if we list that now, it's gone. So if we change directories out, and the next one is how do you destroy a, how do you rename? Oh, okay, so here we've got our new one. We can MV the new one uh, to a new one with a new name. And now if we list that out, you'll see a new one with a new name, and that's happening here. Cool. So yeah, I think that that's pretty much that one. Um, yeah, I think this is helpful stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.